Okay, I'm here uh, at the EVTM Symposium with Dr. Brenner, the uh, creator and chair of the BEST course, the uh, basic endovascular skills for trauma. Um, so, uh, could you just start by uh, explaining a little bit about what is the BEST course? Sure. Um, as the name um, insinuates, it's a basic endovascular skills for trauma. Um, when, we, when we first developed it, we uh, had made um, you know, module for Reboa um, and arterial access, um, as well as simple simple skills such as diagnostic and geography. But as we you know, move forward with, with Reboa and implementation and training, we realize we really need to focus on arterial access mm -hmm. and Reboa for a, for a good solid place to start. So um, the course is um, made up of a didactic portion, which is um, basically the lectures and the theory behind Reboa. Um, we move then to some dry simulators, um, and then the next component is the perfused cadaver mm. component, where we really do ultrasound guided access um, and um, go through the entire Reboa procedure on, on the perfused cadaver model. Um, and most of our course sites have fluoroscopy, which we which we uh, use as a as a um, uh, um, an ability to, just like we would in the resuscitation mm, area, the ability yeah. to confirm placement of the, yeah, yeah. Of the, the device. So. And, and as I, if I'm correct, you also you do like both a course but also a workshop depending on if they That's right. cadavers, right? That's right. So we have, um, we have nine course sites set up in the U.S. and those all have the cadaver capability. But a lot of times we'll have associations that want us to... Uh, put on a course, and obviously we can't travel yeah, with yeah. Uh, with anything yeah, anything yeah. but the dry simulator. So we have a workshop, um, which is really a great introduction to Reboa. It's the same didactics mm -hmm. and dry simulation yeah. um, as the course, but um, it does not have that cadaver component, which we think is really essential for skills like Absolutely, ultrasound guided yeah. access yeah. and surgical cut down and and uh, cannulation of the common yeah. femoral artery. So it depends what kind of skill set you come in. To and and you know which 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 would be better, f either the workshop uh, or the mm. course. But we're mm. happy to to offer workshops uh, to associations as well as to institutions themselves. Yeah. We can travel to hospitals yeah. Yeah. and really train everyone at once and mm. help them with implementation and their algorithm and make it more of a personalized um, Roboa education. Um, instead of you know them traveling independently yeah, or individually, yeah, which course. obviously with time and it's, cost constraints can be yeah, an issue. Yeah. So. And is it usually, um, as I, if I'm correct, it's usually tr mostly trauma surgeons that attend the course? So we've mostly had acute care surgeons, acute care uh, surgeon, but okay. we have also been training um, uh, a lot of the military physicians, uh, some of the EM military physicians as well. We've trained critical care anesthesiologists, mm -hmm. um, emergency medicine, critical care physicians. We have had a lot of interest in the um, obstetrics community All with right. postpartum hemorrhage. Oh, yeah. uh, they have attended our courses um, and it's really been a mix, um, a mix of uh, specialties yeah. and um, also very in a, a very international, uh, international okay, right. audience as yeah. well. A lot of, a lot of people from uh, you from Asia and um, all right. Australia, New Zealand. Okay. We've had them from, from all over, so it's yeah. been great. Yeah. And is, are they usually um, attendings or is it residents or is it both? It's mostly mostly faculty yeah. that are coming. Um, we are, um, of course, at, at places that do Reboa. We are obviously highly recommending that the that the senior level residents be trained at least with some familiar yeah. familiarity yeah. with the procedure because they are uh, able to to help out and they're actually pretty adept at endovascular skills mm. having gone through general surgery residency and vascular yeah. training so they actually pick the skill up um, very quickly yeah. and uh, you know many institutions um, they're they're the ones that are actually doing the procedure under the supervision of the faculty so. and is it is it a one day course or is it several days so the best course itself is is just a half day, half day okay. um, it's you know a little bit longer than the workshop yeah. but they're both uh, they're both half day uh, entities. Okay. So just and how? Because you, you, I'm, I'm sure you're very familiar with the, there's other sort of uh, endovascular mm -hmm. courses. Mm -hmm. the, the EVTM course we have here in Arbro, mm -hmm. the direct course, mm -hmm. for example, in Japan. Um, how how would you compare the, the uh, these other courses compared to the best course? Yeah, I think um, you know everyone has a different way of really doing everything, and training is no different. So um, it's really. Um, more of an individualized mm. um, concept. So what the skills set that we feel is important um, and the modules that we decide to train on and then, um, you know, those are just from personal experience um, 
doing both trauma and vascular. So, uh, but there's other great courses out there that are equivalent um, and just you know, certainly more sophisticated than, than the best course. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, all of these training courses are, you know, the common thread is that, you know, we're all trying to promote you know, safe use yeah, of, of Reboa. Yeah. So, you know, whether it's a, an, an animal or, or, or a um, cadaver yeah. or dry simulator mm. or, you know, whatever you have, it's, mm. you know, I think the, the foundation of all of them is that we're, yeah. you know, really just trying to, to, to mm. get some, some good training out there. And what do you think, yeah, I mean, there's also, uh, for example, now I was, earlier today, I was talking to, to uh, Professor Bofford uh, with the DSTC course. They're in, starting next year, they're starting to implement these endovascular uh, techniques and there. Um, do you think that there's a place uh, for both courses or should we start maybe combining them uh, in the future? What, what, what is your point on, uh, standpoint on this? So I think, uh, you know, a lot of that depends on who the, who the audience is, mm. who, who you're teaching. Um, you know, the military courses, obviously that, you know, the, the environment that Reboa occurs in is completely different mm. in the military than it is in the civilian. Obviously there is some, some similarities, but it's, a, it's a generally a, a different environment. Um, so I think that, that you know, I, the concept of having a ton of courses is obviously yeah. daunting, um, but, you know, these established courses like his mm. um, that, that want to include, you know, the Reboa component, I think that's a great, you mm. know, a great way mm. to do that. Um, we, we plan to do the same thing with the Asset and Atom courses and yeah. add a Reboa mm. component to, to those very well-established yeah. courses. So, um, you know, I, I think the answer is as long as, you know, the, the, the education um, is high quality, it's, it can be done in any fashion. Absolutely. And then it is also, if people don't have possibility of, of traveling to multiple places, then, you know, there's more options, then at least they can do one course, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and we can also, you know, learn from, from each, each other's yeah. courses, yeah. too. You know, it's, sure. it's, it's a um, very... Um, uh, it's educational, not just for the students, but for, for yeah, the faculty yeah, and yeah. Uh, for us as well. For yeah. sure, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much for, for uh, doing this interview. So that was um, uh, Megan Brenner's um, uh, ideas of how uh, endovascular uh, techniques should be uh, uh, taught. Thank you. Thank you.